Okay, we're going live here with Nikki Sales team coming in. First team to finish the ONAC. We don't know what his position is yet, but here he is coming in. Looking good. Looking clean. Nikki Sayo. Fib number 20. There's Nikki's wife. Team's looking good. Good job, Mickey. Right on, Nikki. There he is. He's ticking hard. Eight time for Nikki Sayo. 106 minutes, 56.3 seconds. 106.56.3. There he goes. Thanks for joining us, everybody. You are now at the finisher shoot here. We're back live. This is the third and segment today or fourth segment today. You're back in Fairbanks. Right everybody got the their middle. lunch in. Turn they got their checking the scoreboard looks. in. And now you're just right here in the finisher shoot. This is the public's not like allowed in here. They have to stay behind here. You're behind the scenes getting the really good shots. The dog's coming in. Hopefully you were able to watch some of those other feeds out there. Bud Streeper's feed and the Alaska Live feed. I'm sure they look good. Let me know what you saw out there. You can see everybody's tuned in looking down. Looking down here to see if we can see who's coming in next. Yep, we just had Nikki say I was coming in so it's going to be a... This is what it's like to be a dog dog fan here. Thanks Athena Seville. I really appreciate that. Love your live stream. Well, I love you being here with me. This is what it, real life in the dog track. A lot of waiting, wondering, watching. You're in the special ray shoot. Hello. How are you? They're coming in right now. Yep, we're real happy. The dogs are. Andrea Bond in the finishing Andrea shoot. Bond moving up today, folks. Tommy Bird. Moving up. Remember day one, she had a lot of trouble. Got her snow hooked, stuck, couldn't get it off the sled. Had a major mess out there. Lost a lot of time. And there she is, looking good. Gary, her husband, calling him home right there. We interviewed those guys yesterday. Go back to the feed. Small community here. Another team in. Hey, all right. We're in Fairbanks, Alaska at the Mushers Hall here. This is the 2018 final. We have a three-day race. Historic trails here. There he is. Tommy Bird throwing high fives. Letting them home. Look at those dogs. Looking good. We wish they would stop so we could get get a good look at them, but they got to keep moving through here because there's teams coming in all the time. Conditions are nice. They're not quite as warm as yesterday right now, but it does, uh, you can tell how sunny it got yesterday, and it's cool breeze today. Snow is a little bit colder. Okay, you're hearing the times they were looking over Marvin Cochran's wife's shoulder because she's keeping meticulous stats. Um, yep, today I'm the stats lady. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing this for you or for the club? For, for myself and for, for you and for you so you'll know what's going on. Okay. Andrea Bond just came in with the fastest time for the day so far. She did look darn good. <laughs> she did look darn good. So that's Marvin Cochran's wife. He's in the top 10 right now, we hope. She's taking all the stats down. It's a lot we don't of things. have very much stats right now, but I'll be back. <laughs> okay, super exciting. We have to, some, some special kids are allowed over here, but everybody else is supposed to stay behind the bunting over there, and that way people don't get in to the way of the dog team's finishing. Okay, Doug Butler, the rookie, is coming in next. 
All right, for you New Hampshire fans, for you kind of sled dog rock star movie fans, uh, Doug's from New Hampshire. He's been racing around North America, and he'll have a documentary out on his journey at some point. They're still filming. He tends to be one of those lighthearted guys who makes racing a fun festival kind of day. It's good to see his smile and his waves when he's out there. Always a crowd pleaser. Hey, thanks everybody. I'm trying to read some of your comments here. Do I hear a wild boar in the background? <laughs> I think we got a big old dog over to my right that's barking in the mic down there. Or do we have a scary ice? <laughs> we got a set of ears right there, don't we? On Friday? Yeah, what's up? On Friday we were over there watching. Yeah? And Doug was dancing on the sled. Was he? See, he's kind of a crowd favorite, isn't he? Here he is, Doug Butler. This is Doug Butler coming across the upper field. All of his friends still working hard. Yeah, he's waving, he's dancing, he's shaking his booty out there, making mushing fun again. Not that it ever wasn't, but it's nice to see the lighthearted. That's right, folks. Get on board here. Give Doug Butler some love. He'll be watching this feed later. He'll see all your little hearts and likes. There he is. He's shaking. Just being a real goofball. Let's see what he looks like up close. ADMA, that's the name of the club hosting it. Oh, he's drinking beer! <laughs> there he is. Clearly playing it out there, having fun. Another dog team in. There he is, chugging a beer. Team number 19, Doug Butler. Kids at home, remember you have to be over 21 to do that. And you shouldn't be drinking on a sled, but I think he's also making the point that this is a fun, festive day, that we're here to, here to have a good time together. The community of dog mushing has always had carnivals and we'll be going to one in a couple weeks, so join me there. Tannin, Alaska, coming up in a couple weeks. Stay tuned for that. Christy Collins says he'll fit right in with the Wisconsin crowd. That's right, yeah, he will. You know, it's really nice. It's nice to see an older gentleman having a lot of fun, invigorating the crowd. I'm always a big fan of having music at races. I think right now that could be a nice little soundtrack. For Sterling. You know, keep it interesting for folks. I've been to three or four world championships. That's a good technique to use. Keep your audience engaged. Looks like Jennifer's Patricia Speckater. Thanks for joining us. Laura Monks McKenzie, thanks for being in here. Joining our live finish here. It won't get really exciting for a little while, but it's always fun to see what order they come in. Sterling and finishing shooting, we've got a ton of finish Big passes out there. Just a minute. Jen Stilling's dogs. Okay. It's a good looking team right there. Look at that little high five. Gonna go out there and join her husband. Family. Okay, Laura Monks McKenzie, let us know how Buddy's doing. Was he out? Could you hear him through his camera? Did he look good? Did he have to stop it all? Let's get a little update from Laura. Write us a comment. She's had Buddy on the iPad. Okay, Christy Collins asks, how many batteries do I go right through? Great question. It's kind of endless. I just try to keep them charged. The lead and followed by um, teams, it's the cold that sometimes can get them. Brooke Thompson, thanks for all the great race coverage. Well, thanks for being here. Okay, here we go. They said our race marshal, so if he's noticing something, he's the conductor around here. Okay, folks, three teams coming. Three teams coming. This is what it's all about. Don Brown's here. She's one of our race officials. 
They're gonna keep an eye on this. Alex. Is that Alex? No, that's Three teams coming in, that means many volunteers have to be ready to get these teams through and to their trucks. It's a lot of dogs. Michelle Hoffman, thanks for that comment there from our online audience. And remember, this is uh, Open North American Sprint Racing now. Ooh, boy. Team over here. Team over here. And a team right there. Wow. Three teams, y'all. There's two on the mat. Who's behind Don? Don, he's coming. Oh, boy. What order are they coming in? Don, got second. And another team down on the lower field. Okay, let's go ahead and take the first one first. Oh boy. Come here, Tiny. Come here, Pickett. Come here, Tiny. Evan Hahn. Come here, Tiny. Throwing a... There's his team looking good. And we're right away coming in another one. Don Cousins right behind him. How exciting. Open class sprint racing. Look at that. Boom. All right, nice. Good shot there, right? And then we got another team coming right here. Wow! Very cool. Right on. High five to our race judge. Three teams in a row. So sprint racing, a little different, folks. For those of you who are with us at Iditarod a couple days ago, we're now here in Fairbanks. We've moved up to the sprint class. This is a 27-mile culmination of a three-day race. There you go. Three teams coming in. That must and have been exciting out there on the trail. Entrican across the upper field. All right, Emily Entrican, one of my favorites. Nice to see all those hearts and thumbs. If you love Emily, give her some love. She'll see this on the feed later. Here she is coming in. Smaller team, she can never start with more than about 12 these days. She doesn't have enough in her kennel. She's single, working at home. Not everybody has a whole backyard full of dogs. She's, she operates with very few, does the best she can. And McGinn, thanks for saying the vids look good today. Working on it for you. Here she is, Emily Entrican. Good job, Emily. Yeah, Emily. Hey. Looking to see she got one in the sled. There she is, waving to the, the crowd. People lined up everywhere here, folks. Both sides. If you were standing right here, this is the world. Again, it'd be cool to have a little soundtrack going right now. Just a little tunes, keep our, our folks who are all patiently waiting. That'd be a nice touch. I'll never forget Germany 2015. They had soundtracks going 10 hours a day, two weeks in a row. Made it super fun. We had about 5,000 fans from all over southern Germany, Switzerland. Coming into the Black Forest, grooving away all day, drinking some mulled wine, listening to some ABBA, some country tunes, keeping the crowd and the kids moving, grooving. All right, Athena, Savoy, yes, they are beautiful from our online audience there man they're so happy to patch coming to the finishing shoot now all eight of his dogs still working nice coming in here that last little hill can be a little push be surprised a tired dog team and the official finish is actually right there so that's where the time stops there you go. Bob Klupatch. All right, my neighbor in Willow. Great to see his team out here. He's got some great bloodlines. He's more of a recreational musher. He's also a major volunteer in Willow. He grooms all the trails in the neighborhood with, along with uh, several other folks out there doing the hard volunteer work, keeping the training trails open for all those Iditarod teams, for Wade Mars, for you are awesome, for all the folks who train in our neighborhood, Travis Beals, guys like Bob out there. I see him out in the snow machine every morning, every afternoon. That's what a dog community is all about. Everybody chipping in their bit. Yeah, 
the upper field. Yes. Yes. Suzanne Johansson, thanks for loving this race with us from our online audience. Glad to have you back, sprint mushing here. Wish I could zoom in for you, we'll be working on the technology, try to get this a little more exciting. Hey, Jake Way from Minnesota online, he's a subject matter expert, you guys should go to his Facebook page. In fact, Jake, if you can throw your, uh, a link to your, your Facebook page on there, I'd love to see those videos you put out. Okay, John Earhart, he made a move today. Look at that. John Earhart. Hear the crowd. Good job! He worked hard today. He worked hard today. Good job, John. That's 110% on Sunday. Oh, that was a tough one. Well, way better than yesterday. <laughs> if you're wondering if the mushers are actually working when they're kicking out there, the answer is, well, there's your answer. Okay, that's John Earhart, the Earhart family from Tanana. If you want to see an interview with his brother, Carl, go to my monster two and a half hour feed from yesterday. You'll see Carl and I talk about village dog sledding and the old traditional ways. All right, you can see the team right there, James Wheeler, moving right along. Moving up and around 16, 18 miles an hour for these sprint teams. I did a lot of teams are moving between 6 and 8 miles an hour, maybe 9 or 10, so much faster. Come on, Come on! Rada, I'll uh, answer your question here in a minute. Come on, Chris! Oh boy, another team, look at this. Beautiful. That's the chase. Oh boy. We have a quiet in the church section. We got Jason Dunlap here trying to keep everybody. Come on, come on, come on, <laughs> it's on here in Fairbanks, folks. James Wheeler coming in. Come on, Jim. There's that one. We'll go right up here. Look at him calling him in. Look at that. Marvin running. Oh boy. Yeah. See that effort he put in? Super cool. We don't know what position they're in yet because all the teams aren't in. That's the cool thing about reverse start. The fastest team finishes towards the end. Wow. That was cool. Am again. Thanks for that. Uh, from my online audience, I'm going to upgrade a whole bunch. Try to get you some zoom, some better sound. We'll work on it. All right, Jake Way, always from Washington. Hey, Jake, please put your uh, videos for, so our audience can enjoy some of your stuff. It's beautiful to see you mushing in Minnesota. I always love it. You do great work out there with your dogs living off grid, so share that, please. Jay Olmstead, thanks for joining us. Team USA member there on our feed right now. All right. Here we go, Craig Taylor. There he is, go get his, oh, missed his high five there. Oh, we got a high five there. Oh, another team coming in. This is uh, race day, folks. Wow. This is race day, always a little bit of action in the dog yard. So you're standing behind the scenes. The public isn't allowed here. This is the Alaska Dog Mushers Association giving you the right to be in a cool spot to see the race. Amy Dunlap, there she is. Jason's her husband right there. He's raced this several times. They'll be debriefing the race right now. There they are. I can't run up there quite yet because we have other mushers coming in, but boy, everybody's got a story who finishes. Remember, it's 27 miles today. Last two days, Friday and Saturday, just 20 miles. So your dogs have to be able to be 
just as excited to run today and be able to do the extra mileage and keep their speeds up and not get tangled and have this all the stars align with passing other teams lots has to happen today to be a champion out at the open north american that's what makes this race so special this is the mushing state of the world alaska's villages all around here that have had the necessity of using dogs not pleasure not comfort not fun but the necessity of using dogs for moving around meat wood and that's what tradition is being preserved here. That's why these races are important. I think sometimes people forget that. So you can see the different native folks from Tanana, from Tana Cross, Manly. I'll just keep giving you a little 360 here. Lower field on the right hand side. Ha <laughs> ha and again saying she's loving it. Had a couple of passes already today and bringing them on home. Let's see. Chastity Lucas, thanks for that shout out there. Found my new obsession watching Kale's coverage this past week. Well, you know what makes it fun is all of us together, right? All the comments and, and then these mushers are good friends of mine. They will watch this feed at night. And they'll see your comments on there. They'll see when you throw parts. They can add their own. That's the beauty of live streaming is that Whatever you're contributing now, or if you're watching it after the fact, gets built into the record so the mushers can see if you're cheering them on, what you're saying, what questions you have, what level of interest. And that's what we're trying to do, is, is also have a two-way conversation with our mushers. Let them know the public cares, that they're watching, that they want them to have best practices. You guys want to see good, here happy dogs come in here? Lena's coming across the field, folks. She started in third place today, so Buddy's wife. Oh, we got Australia here. Speedback Kennels joining us for the Lena's finish. That's cool. More subject matter experts out there on our feed here. Lena Streeper. She's hoping for a podium finish here. You're at the Open North American Championship. Lena Streeper from Canada. Look at that team coming across the finish line. In Fairbanks. There they are. Her husband Buddy's still out there. He was the race leader today. That's a good looking team of dogs right there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 in harness. You can always see the streeper kennels because they got the big old nice rig out there. Legendary family in the sports. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Two teams. Two teams, folks. Fairbanks, Alaska. Historic trails here. This is where George Atlin made his name. Roxy Wright. Whoa. Nice run in there. This is day three. About $8,000 for first place. Fairbanks, Alaska's finest race at their home course. This is Mushers Hall. You'll see the crowd in just a minute. You're behind the scenes here. Mark Hardum in Alberta, followed very closely by Ken Cheesick from Place Lake, Michigan. Here he is, Mark Hardum from Canada. Kicking hard, even at the finish. Is over. Welcome home. Nice job, Mark. He's been working real hard on this. That's where he's going to go back to his truck. Whoop, Kenny Cheesick. Let's get in on Ken. Look at that dog team right there. So Ken's got that break on. There he is. He's from Michigan. All right, nice run, Kenny. He is always tiring, folks. Kicking up that hill, managing those dogs. It's stressful. He's come second in this race before. He's never won, but he's won the for rendezvous, so he's fully capable. This year is the rebuilding year in uh, Michigan. The temperatures were in the 90s this year. He couldn't train in the fall. That global effect of having tough conditions impacting folks, we know that. It's always hard. Here's your scene in Fairbanks. It's a real party. We had a parka contest earlier with the native ladies from the villages with these gorgeous parkas on. We had the kids contest earlier to go pick up pop cans. This mushers hall is owned by the Alaska Dog Mushers Association. You two can become members and help them with their legacy building here. 
couple bucks to them would help them keep this tradition alive. There's the watchtower. It's where they look out and they call in the, the mushers. They can see forever down here because we're at a rise. Party tents, there's souvenirs and excellent food. This is Alaska, folks. Dog mushing at its finest. You can see the field they're looking at. So Mount McKinley, if you could see way off in the distance, it'd be right over here. This is the entire Alaska range in the distance. Denali National Park, about two hours, hour and a half to the south here. And these teams have been out on these trails all through the woods. There's different obstacles out there. It could be moose. You gotta be prepared for that out here. Moose could charge your team, get tangled up in your team. Could be bunnies. And I, I've skied on this course in a championship race where I have my two dogs flying along in front of me, 20 miles an hour. And Quinny saw a squirrel, almost took us out. Ooh, Michael Tetzner. Oh gosh, folks, the exciting conclusion is about to happen here. Tetzner, Streeper. Here's our race official. He's the guy who certifies the victory. Everybody else lined up waiting. Oh boy, I can see way down there. They are truly on each other's backs. See, they're right, the chase is on. You're getting the perspective as if you were here in Fairbanks. There's a lot of patience at sled dog races, but we're hoping that the technology gets better over time. We can zoom in on the racers on the track. Bud Streeper's live right now. Go to his feet. We've been telling you all day. He's going to finish this with you on board. Michael Split the screens. Buddy's working his phone over here. Michael Tetzner there. So that means Buddy Streeper's the winner of this race. He has closed the gap on Tetzner. There were two minute intervals. So if you see a team that left two minutes ahead of you and you've caught up to him, You've made up time, that means you're the winner. If you weren't behind, he had a good lead going in, so we're watching history here. Let's go ahead and get in on it close. We'll make it exciting for you. This is Michael Tetzner from Germany. Here it is. It's over. Welcome home, Michael. Right behind him, buddy. Streaming away. Nice job, buddy. There he is. Looks like that was a... I heard the live stream was great. Yeah, right there. <laughs> there it is. There's the live stream. Hey, there's another team coming. Come here. All right, if you want to see what the live stream Stand looks right like, here. there it is. Wave to Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Right there. See? Say hi, Grandma and Grandpa. We're filming them. They're filming us. <laughs> it looks great. I can actually see the feed right here. Hey, guys. Nice work. What a cool technology. I hope we all get to use this. I hope we get to spin it all together and make a better story for you all at home. Can't be here. Here's some happy champion dogs right there. You can see some slobber on the faces and working hard. Yeah. Is that good? Wagon Tails is a happy team here, folks. We're right back in our coverage of up close and in person on you. We want you to see the dogs. That's what they look like. Ready to go more. They're ready to go more, aren't they? Open class race dogs here. They can run three minute miles, 20 miles, three days in a row. Way different than I did at odd speeds here, folks. These are the Ferraris. Typically these are German Shore Hair Pointer mixed with Alaskan Husky or a selected Alaskan Husky with maybe a little bit of hound. There they are going back to their truck. There's that live feed again. Kiddos on there. How cool is that? Okay, can somebody let me know who uh, who would be one, two, three there? Okay, Michelle Hoffman from All Day Line said lots of fins in the UP. Okay, yeah. Great. Let's go to the old uh, 
Let's see if we can get an interview out of Bud. He's usually real good about giving us some love here on our audience. It was cool to be able to see that live feed there. The Streepers. Buddy came up short last year, remember, when Roxy Wright won this race. And there's his feet again. We can go watch. This is what he's seeing. You can get an idea of kind of what I'm, I'm seeing when I'm at home or on my camera here. There's the comments coming up. There's the feed. Very, very cool. There's the setup for it. I think we're looking at some of the future of sled dog racing there. Yep. People checking out his setup here. Got the camera guys. Just a grab a few microphones in. That's fine. Go ahead, you guys. You don't mind if we no, go ahead. No, I've done it yeah. for years. Okay, just want to make sure. No, I hate I hate people having to repeat themselves. Sorry, I gotta click, click around the other one. You're the Channel 13 guy, right? Yes, sir. Congrats, buddy. Thank you. Erica, come here, please. Grab that Facebook Live off my sled and, and film, film me here. Yep, so Bud's <laughs> going to keep his stream going. It's been one of the coolest things of the event. The Streeper Are live, live feed. right now? Of course. Great. I was up to 300 people. <laughs> I know, I saw that. It yeah, was that was pretty cool. Rad. Yeah. I sent all my viewers your way, for sure. Yo, dude, split screening. we got three screens going now. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So maybe the future of dog motion. You know, it's such a isolated sport we're in the middle of nowhere we're in different places that are hard to to get near to hard to give the public that that perspective of what we do and uh yeah like uh, kale said there in the facebook live that's getting people I I involved to see what's happening and and the moose holes on the trail and the moose that i seen the first day and, and my fellow competitors those are split second decisions that are happening so fast it's uh it was quite cool it's uh, definitely you're part of the driver's street there and it was a it was a great day of racing well, buddy, we want to hear about how today's race went. You've got your time. How did, it, how did it feel out there? It felt good. I was really surprised with the with the improvement of the trail. It was a great improvement on the trail. I was expecting it to be slower, but the temperature, the sun didn't come through. My hands were actually cold in good gloves today, which which I knew the dogs would feel. The dogs felt good and feel good about themselves. So the, the dogs performed really well, and I was super happy with the run. You mean good moose tracks? Any any moose tracks out there? Tons, non-stop. Um, one of the gentlemen that did the trail sweep that's before the run, they go around, and he said he's seen 20 moose on the trail. I seen one the first day during the race. I seen the tracks today. I seen the fresh, the fresh gap, the fresh poop there. But um, fortunately, no moose incidents, and I think everybody got around safe. Yeah. And a question for you, buddy. You know, last year it was pretty cold. Uh, how did it feel this year, you know, racing the track and not having to worry about freezing temperatures? And and maybe that's a sign of the times because, you know, typically Fairbanks is cold. And last year at 30 below, that's a little more what we're accustomed to. And, um, I mean, I'm not complaining. You know, I enjoyed I know the spectators. I, I, there wasn't this many here last year. And I think the cold weather did that. Um, it was just... There's a fine threshold where the mushers, the dogs, and the spectators can all enjoy it. And I think we, we, we found that this weekend. So it was actually great conditions for, for, for everybody. Now this is your fifth ONAC title? Yeah, that is. That, that's what, number five. What's going to stick out about this one in particular? First and second, I believe is what's going to stick out we've been trying to we we've, we've been racing two teams in a lot of the big races for the last couple of years never have we swept the north american and i think unofficially we did so first and second with my wife you know streeper candles we've been coming here for 40 years you know my father i raced this when i was 18 years old 20 years ago uh, 16 years old 20 years ago and this is my super bowl and this is my mecca of sport and i wanted to challenge myself like it's not a challenge enough to come to this race, but I wanted to have two teams come to this race and first and second. So I guess now we're going to shoot for a one, two, three at some point. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a great race. I really enjoyed it. Talk a little bit about your dogs. Uh, did you use you know the same leaders all the way? Yeah, through? I did. I did use the same leaders all. Basically, the whole front end stayed the same. Um, I run 16 dogs the first day and went with 15 yesterday and 14 today. So it was a very similar team. The leaders are Bobby and Elvis, two three-year-old males, both born and bred in my kennel, come from our bloodlines. And um, they won Anchorage and um, they're just super dogs. They really complement each other. One, uh, one's 
focused 900% of the time all the way, that's Bobby. And Elvis is like your big relief pitcher. You know, when you when it's late in the game and the starting pitcher's doing good, you don't even need to take the starting pitcher out, but you got a guy that can throw 105 mile an hour fastball and just smoke it right by him. And that's what Elvis is. When when the game's on the on the table, that's who you want to have the ball, and that's Elvis in lead. Was it the same team from the Ferrandi? Yeah, very much it was. And I actually talked about that on the live there today. Lena beat me on the... <laughs> 97.25 for that Selena. So I'm just listening to her time. Now we want to know Mike's time. If he's anything more than 99.35, she won. She got second place. She got him. Congratulations. Yep. Picking out one and two, Steve. Yep, that's right. She got him by 20 seconds overall. So it's one and two sweep. So that's racing. And I made a strategic move out there. I didn't pass Mike. And I could have with four miles to go. But I didn't need to because we're running a draft. You know, Mike's going to draft me. Like two cars on the racetrack. Two travel faster than one. And I didn't want to take him and draft him home to get ahead of Lena by a few seconds. So I actually jeopardized my run today and slowed them down and strategically just kept them behind. And I wasn't within talking distance of Mike. I didn't impact his race. And he ran an excellent race. He's going to get the bronze medal here and he should be more proud of that. It was a good race by Mike. It was the same team from Anchorage um, all the way across except for one dog. Her name was sorry two dogs but the one of them was name was Gwen and she didn't race Anchorage she did race with Lena she did three days and um, I took her from Lena and um, <laughs> this we the goal is to come and win and then you want to bring your next best team and I lost this race last year with some T dogs on that second team that should have been on the first team and I didn't want to make that mistake again so it was great to have a good race. Not to bring up, you know, last year, but uh, how much was that kind of weighing on you, you know, throughout training, throughout the off season? All season long, that's my straight motivation, yeah. is, is that. I don't think about my victories, I think about my defeats. That's what drives me, that's what makes me get up in the rain and go outside in the dark and stay out in the cold weather and work harder than anybody is because of that, is I want to, 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 to be challenged. And um, it was great to see a, a great race last year, and, but I'm extremely proud of our organization and our team and our sponsors to put this championship together. Lastly for me, do you know what year you won your first owner? 2003, 2003 was when I won my first one. 2003, I won, I come behind, Eagle was in his Mecca, he'd won four straight, and I was the first person to beat him, and I beat him by 20 seconds overall. It was a tremendous race. And then in 07, I set the all-time speed record that still stands here, 57 minutes. We run it in 67, a whole other ball game. Um, just, you know, it was a perfect storm. You know, it was perfect. 57, 59. It'll never be touched. It will never be touched. Anyways, um, and then the last couple of years, 15, 16, and then last year we got the silver again, and then this year on top. So 03, 07, 14, 15. No, 15, 16. Yep, that's cool. right. And then all the other times were second. I, I, I got second in this race seven times. And my dad's got second in this race five times. So, you know, it's that big step. The biggest step is from second in. I mean, it's hard to come up, but once it's that knocking down the top position is the one that we all want it. George Alice said it. Everybody wants that one position. Nobody wants to say, oh, I want to go and finish third. That's not what we're gunning for. We want to go and win it. So that's the big hurdle is that one. I mean, once you get the recipe and the formula, I was just talking with multiple champion, Arlie Reynolds, and he said the same thing. Once you get the formula and you know the strategic moves that you need to make you know the recipe you, you can bake that beautiful cake that everybody loved and because you, you know what it took and uh, you just got to duplicate it but these mushers are getting better I mean everybody's getting better look how close the races are this year the first day 10 mushers minute and 30 seconds that's unbelievable that is it's great to see a lot of local mushers the Taylors the Earharts it was a great race buddy thank you so much so how, do you, how do you describe your dogs just real quick describe them yeah so we have an audience of new folks yeah. who just came over from my did rod and they're looking at your hounds and then how do you describe they're them? They're not they're hounds. Close. They're not. They're um, they got hair. Um, we Greg did breed Taylor. to Eagle in 03 three total because we needed to because he's running a different dog. But since that time we've been breeding the breeding the one more hair back on the dog. I really think the dog, the Alaskan Husky, 
is oh, a super dog, so but cool. the hound was just a part of the evolution of the Alaskan Husky, just John like Earnhardt the Saluki hounds of Gareth Wrights, the Aurora Huskies of the 70s, and the and uh, and, uh, and uh, the multiple breeds that come in. It's an evolution of the Alaskan Husky, and it is the Alaskan Husky. Um, of course, you're going to have variations in looks, and that's just because of the diversity of the breed. Um, but you'll see one with hair and one with less hair, and those are brothers and sisters, but it's just the open genetic pool that they're pulling from. The goal is eventually to have dogs like the Yukon here that has the hair Marvin that has the hair Real that has um, you know the Marvin good fat Capron, bum we like to have a big fat ass by the third day um, <laughs> sorry girl um, actually there's that show Madagascar and last year she was pregnant at this race so she didn't get to race we bred her in Wyoming and she run Anchorage pregnant and she showed up here with a big belly so she didn't get to race so I was calling her that hippo off of Madagascar that's Gloria and the, the song they, they like him big. <laughs> she like a, a big strong rear. I like weight. Weight. I'm talking about actual body mass and weight. Um, no no bone showing. No rib cage. Smooth bum. Smooth back end. No defined hips. Zena. This is Zena. This is very similar. This is very similar. What you're seeing here. This dog's run three days. She lost a pound and a half of Third water today. But what you're seeing here is the smooth rib cage. You are going to see a little more definition because of the shorter coat. But again, we got the round bum on there. And that just shows the dog is a healthy, happy dog. This is Zena, and she's my main point dog. And she's an absolute rock star. You did super. Do you, girls pull more than boys, or boys pull more than girls? No, no, it's it, they're both great. I think the girls are faster, and I think I know they're smarter. I do know they're smarter, but I do believe the boys bring the power and they bring the size, not the sure, sure size. But yeah, those are the dogs. Great, thanks, bud. Appreciate that. I know our audience says too. That's cool stuff there. Look at these guys. That's what we're talking about. I'm learning with you. The Alaskan Husky still reigning supreme. Hi, baby. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. We got some folks coming in, giving congratulations. Here's our live crew. So if you were following the Alaska Live, here they are. They, they're doing a mixing board over in the command center there. They've got a nice setup, and there'll be uh, hopefully a lot more events because I think they're bringing that technology that we're looking to to be able to do a production scene where you have multiple cameras tied into one feed and then folks like you at home can see multiple different cut shots without having to leave the feed. Is that about right? And now, how long have you guys been around for? Maybe we'll see you there. I think this is Once pretty much again, it. I think we have to go upward now. But uh, when did you start this type of deal? Because but look at this. We got like the, the super control right earpiece. I just heard like the. Oh, the yeah, we got. Looks like Secret Service agents. Secret Service agents. They're mixing the feed there. So cool. Great. Thanks for that. Can't wait to watch when I get home. There, no worries. There's your. Uh, there's Lena. There's that. There's those dogs again. Here's that look. I'm just kind of obsessed with learning on that. That nice smooth bum, smooth rib cage. We just all learned something there. Yeah, you're very cute. Hi. 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 All right. Is that good, everybody? Were you learning something? Oh, boy. So when you have kids at a race, you just do whatever you can to keep them happy, right? Just like that. It's a family affair. That's cool. Okay, here's your stakeout. I think we can get a little bit of more interviews for you all before we sign off. All right, call Earhart, Gary Market, get in here, boys, both of you guys. What's going on? How did how did the race go for you all today? Oh. You were on the roof, right, Carl? Yep, going live. Yeah. And then Gary, you had your partner out there, yeah, Andrea. Yeah, Andrea, yeah, yeah. She did good. They ran all the way to perfect. Yeah, she she had to pass a lot of teams. That slowed her down a little bit, but. Any idea how many? Yeah. I know four for sure. Okay. I know she passed two and two in the squigglies in the extension. I know, and then a uh, couple before that. Well, one well, before that, and then I, four for sure. I don't know. I'd have to ask her maybe five. That's what we cool. were just talking yeah. about on my Facebook Live. I talked about his dog team coming in, and they were running. Like even compared to the top racers today, Andrea's dogs were running at the finish line up the hill, not loping, not trotting, but running after three days of Open North American. It's impressive. She did move up quite a bit today, yeah. didn't she? 
Yeah, she did, yeah. Because yeah. that, number, that number showed up pretty yeah. soon in the... First uh, <laughs> day, uh, seven minute loss cost us a lot. Right, yep. Yeah, it would have been 143 minute or 243 or whatever, something. 242 and, somewhere there. And then John was, uh, John Earhart was working real hard. He came in winded. It looks like he put yeah. in 110%. Oh, he does. He yep, was sweating yep. like a... Yeah, Finished eight. You know, yeah, he's guy, happy. Uh, okay, he, great. He works harder than John, I tell you that. John works hard. Yeah. And he so out here, I think sometimes we'll see maybe butt on the sled and think it's all dogs going, you know, fast. But the musher has a lot to do with kicking that sled, especially in that approach. And I challenge even my brother John and all the rest of the mushers. You watch my video and you've seen Marvin Cochrane run up that hill. This is a 60-something-year-old man, and he ran. This is a past champion of this race. Yeah. Yeah, that I did see impressive. that too. It, I think it got the whole crowd fired up, right? Yeah, Carl, yeah. People kind of said, like, you know, you hear the little roar starting to build. Yeah. A lot of dedication there. Of course, his wife was yeah. right near us too, and she's awesome. Yeah. All right, great. Thanks, Gary Markley. Thank Carl, you for all we'll, you see do, you, Carl. we'll see you in two weeks out in Tanana. And Toke. Uh, and in Toke Race of Champions, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sure. great. Those two are the best right there, giving us some subject matter expertise. Let's cruise on down a little bit more for those of you still with some questions. Okay, Lisa Dennison. Oh, you're very welcome. I've had a fun time broadcasting it for you, showing you all what's going on. Uh, I'll try to catch up with some of the notes here. Yeah, those dogs are lovely. Wasn't that nice that, that uh, Buddy uh, gave us that rundown? And you know, I think we forget as reporters to ask like fundamental questions. Who are your dogs? Tell us who the dogs are. That's what we want to know. Everybody kind of debriefing the race here. There's the Ken and Lori Cheesix and their crew debriefing. There'll be some awards coming up soon. There's Dave Turner and his crew debriefing. He didn't race this year, but everybody's talking dogs, cracking a soda, cracking a beer, celebrating a lot of work to get here, a lot of training, hours and hours of training. Well, that doesn't even cut it. Thousands of hours of training. Emily Enterkin, one of our favorites. Let's go see how her dogs did. Ah, no, no, we're, you're allowed to celebrate. Laura Alloway, you're allowed to celebrate. Make racing fun again. Yeah. Doug Butler, right? That's what he just did. Yeah, there he is. Oh, no, I, what Make racing fun on? again, right? Yeah, oh, he came in with such style. I, I had to have someone slap me see if I was in heaven or something. It was so much fun. Hey, he, I am alive. How many East Coasters are here? I won. Becky Childs, she's from Vermont. <laughs> Doug's from New Hampshire. No, I'm from Vermont. Vermont. You're from Vermont too? I'm the bad guy from Middlebury, Vermont. Okay. Jeez, Another so Middlebury? Fun. And I used to live in Vermont. Okay, we love that place. <laughs> I even uh, rent land from Middlebury College. I have college students. That, that well, you helps me. You have a lot of fans on the page here who loved, <laughs> loved uh, seeing the enthusiasm. I appreciate it too. These weekends should be festive like this, right? Oh, this is this is one of the highlights of my life here. This was just wild, fantastic. Oh, and did I you want to turn team around and do it again? Did you drive out all the way for this race? Yes, we did. How many days? Well, we were a little longer. I don't know what we were like seven days. Let's see, we were in a blizzard for two days. We got shut down of a shooting on the highway. We got the cops called on us twice, and the truck broke down three times. Wow! We had so darn much fun. And how do people follow you in your movie here? I don't know. That's okay. That's when is that going to be wrapped up? It's supposed to be 2019. Okay, great. Could be a movie. Because I'm just excited to see it. I know. Move to Hollywood or something. Move to Hollywood. You could be like Becky Childs here, a veterinarian from East Coast who chose Fairbanks for her home. You've been doing some race betting too, haven't you? A little bit, yeah. How do these dogs look today? You know, I was too busy taking pictures of Emily to look at her dogs, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the dogs look good. They look hot, but yeah, really temperatures. Hot. It seemed like it was a touch. I can't really tell. My hands are cold. It's colder than yesterday. Okay. Yesterday was in the forties. Okay, that's what I thought. Doug's looking at his hands right now. He was having too much fun to get cold. I didn't realize. Is it hot or cold? I know. Can't really tell it here. Okay, let's go ahead and turn around here and get some more subject matter experts. Introduce yourselves, please. What? Introduce yourselves. From where? I live here now in Fairbanks. Where okay. You, but I was once a New Englander. See, aren't we all? I'm from Wisconsin originally. But now I'm Fairbanks. And so that's Laura Alloway, Quest 300, mm -hmm. which was super cool. Tourist 200. And Tourist 200, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, but I actually got to be at the Quest 300 and watch you blast out. Cool. 
-hmm. which was a highlight of my life. Mm -hmm. And then following the tracker. Mm -hmm. And so folks from all over Fairbanks come out. We got support left and right, beers being cracked, which I think is great. Of course, I like celebrations, and I would actually like to see some music out here. Right? Don't you think? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for uh, letting us just look at you because that's what we're doing. We're just we're just feeding on you now. We got a whole new audience. My dead rod is live feeding. Right who's now. learning about sprint mushing? I mean, sprint mushing is fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and did you see what Buddy did? No. He live streamed that whole race. Oh, oh, are you serious? From she, the sled. She could open up multiple browsers. You could have mine in one corner. Oh, you could have his cool. in another corner. You could Alaska have the Alaska Live, Live in another corner, and you could actually start to see the future of dog racing. Yeah. Where you I get to go on the too. sleds. That's cool. At Creamers on Friday. Yeah. That's what we're trying to push the envelope here. The more uh, transparency, and the more people can learn and see, and then get on. When Buddy's on that sled, and you see those dogs working, I know how lucky he is because I know that most teams don't look quite like that. Mm -hmm. They're all lined out, hauling butt, having fun. Yep. But that's a world-class team. Right. So people should see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then I know some of the distance mushers have been doing some of that too, some live streaming from their sleds. Fun. Laura's and I did a rod veteran here. Was it hard not being a gnome? No, to greet um, everybody? To, to meet everybody? Yeah, coming home this year. And oh, yeah, it would have been fun to, to greet them at the arch. But it's also fun watching all the tracking. And being out on the race, it was weird. And years ago not being able to follow it well, when you actually fun. raced it yeah yeah it was weird because usually you know exactly what's going on and who's where and hitting the refresh button and you can't do that when you're out on the race and what year was your race uh 2015 okay so that was right after the tough weather year it was yep it was year. it was the it one was right another after tough the weather no year? snow crazy oh, yeah. delzel year so mm -hmm. if folks have insider subscriptions they can actually go back in the archives for a full year and they can watch your interviews Oh. So when you pay for the Insider, you get a whole year. Oh, cool. So they can go and search for Laura Alloway, hashtag Laura Alloway, female musher kicks ass, and see your, like, tired interviews at the checkpoint, right? Which is pretty yeah, much... Yeah, I haven't even seen them. <laughs> I don't want to see them. And that was a Fairbanks start year. <laughs> that was yeah. a... Was, okay. Yeah, and it was wicked cold. I'm gonna do, I to bring do in it. the New Englander, uh, bring out the New Englander in me, it was wicked cold. Like, it was like minus 60, wasn't it? At the time of the oh, okay. I heard it's as low as... Below. Yeah. I know I was camping at 42 below. Camping at 42 below. So the yeah. difference between these, these sprint mushers pull in, drop their dogs, go for a run, they're done in an hour and a half. They can get here like an hour before a race and just like very casually, you know, take their dogs out and, you know, put the harnesses on and no, no booties or jackets or they don't have to fill their sled with anything. They just take their like feather light sled off the truck and it's amazing. It's kind of fun to be a part of. And that's why sprint mushers always think that sprint mushing is so cool because it's so fast. You get it, you go out and train, you get your miles in, you go home, you have a normal life. I, would, I was training out of Emily's all winter, and so I would go and I would, you know, take two hours, whatever it took to get everything, you know, because I had to truck up there, everything unloaded and packed to get all my dogs ready, both teams, because I had Jenna helping me. And we'd go off on a run, and while we were out, Emily would train both of her teams and be done back inside cooking dinner whatever she was doing and we'd get back with our team that takes you know however long to water them and pull booties and get them all loaded up and the sled loaded up and yeah <laughs> so and how many miles would you go on those training runs for the Iditarod team um well this was this year um but I was doing anywhere from you know a shorter run which would have been 15 20 miles up to 75 miles okay right and how many of these teams here can do 75 miles Probably not many, Probably right? Not These sprint many. dogs. They're some not, do. Some can. Yeah, they're not Emily's made for it. They're not training for it. The stage stuff. Yep, she's done some stage. Yep. So just goes to show we're combining the two worlds now. We have the open class racing is kind of more your Ferrari sprint NASCAR, and then your Iditarod is more of your expedition, long distance, yeah. tactical race, lots of challenges, camping, uh, route finding, navigation, all the rest of it, right? Body temperature mitigation, injury. Mm -hmm. Uh, control working on injuries and monitoring your dogs for uh, nine or ten days instead of right. 55 to 75 minutes. Mm -hmm. So a couple big differences there, but super exciting. Yeah, yeah, I really love it. And this is fun to watch and to be a part of. Like, passions in the distance. Did she just fire up? Okay, well, thank you two both for <laughs> contributing on the the feed here. It's always fun. We got folks who have questions for you, but I'm going to go ahead and and move on and probably actually sign off so I can join you all for the celebration thank you yeah cool okay and emily's gonna at some point get this rig out of here this is what it looks like 
You got to load all your stuff up. You got to get your sled on high. All the dogs go in the boxes. They like being in there. It's safe for them. They're big boxes in there. They get to hear everything, but people can't mess with them. And that's nice if you if you know sled dogs well and you know their personalities. They'd much prefer to be safe and in something that it's familiar to them and comfortable, fresh straw than it would be to be just exposed and running around. There's Don Cousins. All right, folks. Okay, so here's the plan. <laughs> we did it. We did another day of uh, incredible racing with you all. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the celebration here. I'm going to drive back to Willow partially tonight, partially in the morning, fly to Washington tomorrow for incident management meetings for my wildfire job, and then I'll be back out on the race circuit in a couple weeks. We'll do some posting in between. Thank you so much, everybody. So many great questions. If I have time in there, I can get to uh, responding to them. If you rewatch the videos uh, in your spare time, you can always add more comments. They fill right in. That's how we do go live uh, because it keeps this like nice journal and record of everybody's contributions to the feed. And that's that's you. You're the you're the family. You're the you're the ones that make this fun. The mushers come and watch the feed. They see all your comments. They see all your questions. They see all your hearts. They see your thumbs up in real time when they're watching it back. So. You get to give them encouragement and give them motivation to work even harder for next year, to work on even better dog care for next year, knowing that you're watching, that you're encouraging them, take good care of those dogs. Uh, you learned about Buddy's type of dog, now you can start putting that in your, your game plan. So if you want to get involved in racing, uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, feedback, let me know. Thanks again to the Alaska Life, Dustin Shannon. Uh, special shout out for sharing our feed, getting us such a nice group of folks together and uh, let everybody know about kill casey live transparent dog active dog sports that's what we're all about non-stop dog wear who i work for supports this feed they let me be here they help me out uh and so give them a shout out too it's always nice when a company's looking ahead looking at the future and, and trying to move that needle on how do we make dog racing more fun uh, healthier safer for the dogs and that we all have a common language to talk about them so thanks so much Love you all. Really appreciate it. It's so great to see you all here, and we'll come back and do it again soon. Stay tuned.